interaction. Yeah. Physical interaction with somebody. Yep. So um, normally what I would do in this workshop is I would have you all do some problem solving around these things, but because we're, we're, this is the speed train on virtual teams, I'm going to give you some tips, and then the, I've also got some handouts for you and doing the slides. But, but make sure if you're running a virtual team, make sure that you at least once a year get everyone together so they have at least once a year some face-to-face -face interaction. And that has huge uh, implications in terms of the success of the team. It also makes sure that you utilize some kind of telepresence technology, whether that's WebEx, which WebEx is pretty decent. Um, Skype now, with Skype you can actually do conference calls and get several people on there. I, I prefer WebEx because you can actually get presentations up there and you can take notes real time and you can have other people take notes and contribute things so it's more interactive. But, but you got to get those nonverbal cues in there. Um, it does, that's not to say that you can't do teleconferences, but make sure that you also get the, the telepresence in there. Um, with language, we're going to talk in a minute about team norms, but make sure that people, it's clear that it's okay for people to say, I don't understand, and that you create uh, a way for them to do that. They might be embarrassed on a group call. So set it up before, when the team forms, set it up before, you know what, look at guys, if you don't understand anything, and if you don't want to voice that out in the group, <coughs> you should call me. Just call me, send me an email, let's clarify. But you set that up at the beginning. Okay, what else in terms of pitfalls? You have uh, technological and latency issues. Okay, so tell me about that. Uh, first of all, with WebEx, sometimes it's not so easy to get on. It seems mm -hmm. to be getting better, sometimes it's not. Uh, you know, with WebEx, I mean, we were, we actually participated in a, an SBS one last week. Yeah. And the guy had his stuff up there, but it wasn't, I mean, we were, we were, we went to our conference room because there was like three of us, four yeah. of us actually. And he had it on really small picture and he tried to communicate with them to like blow it up so I could see it better because I was projecting it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he never even heard me. I raised my hand, he ignored me. You know, <laughs> and there was questions at the end. Raise your hand. Just total silence. Like, like what? What's what? What's with that? Did you I am him and say I've got my hand raised? Are you? I, I you know, I they, the survey. You know, it just it didn't work. I mean, yeah. I tried to say something. I tried to type something. And it was just like going on deaf ears. Yeah. So I don't know if he just turned off or. I mean, he was still connected. Yeah. He may not have seen you raising your hand, it's possible. I don't know what they were doing. Yeah. You know, but, there, but there's that issue, and there's also the issue of just, you know, if you're doing technological virtual conversations, sometimes there's some latency. Just, you know, it doesn't go through right away. It's, there's yeah. a 20 second delay. You know, it, it, it sometimes becomes frustrating. The communication lapses. You, you, know, you yeah. get blurbs if somebody's on a cell phone and they're in a bad cell. Yeah. You know, all of that kind all of stuff. All of those things. It's true. And and the best technology can go wrong. Yeah. So, so plan on it going wrong. Yeah. Have contingency plans. Mm -hmm. Right? And make sure, again, when you establish your virtual team, that's something that needs to be talked about up front at the beginning. What are we going to do when technology doesn't, when there's a that's power right. outage, when it doesn't work? Um, so, you know, if, if we're on WebEx and you're not getting my instant messages, you're not getting that my hand is raised, um, or, or, or I'm not getting that, you're, if I'm the team facilitator, I'm not getting that your hand is raised, send me a text message on my phone. Send me an email. So call me. But don't just be silent about it so that people get the information they need because things will go wrong. Absolutely. Good. What else? Other pitfalls? Lack of attendance. I mean, somebody will come to a meeting and they, yeah. they zone out or yeah. they start working on their emails. Yeah. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lack of attention. Focus. Yeah. Attendance. Attention. Focus. And, you know, along with that, I would write that another pitfall is isolation. So if you've got individuals that are all over the country or all over the globe, there's a tendency for people to feel isolated and not a part of it. So um, again, I, I'm, I'm going to keep coming back to this idea of team norms. 
And team norms are the agreed structures and processes that you put into place right at the beginning when you form your virtual team and you all contribute to it um, that are around things like um, answering, how, how quickly do we answer voicemails and emails? Is it 24 hours? Is it, because culturally there are some differences on that. Um, so do we answer in 24 hours, 48 hours? Um, what, do, what, what is our decision making process? Because a lot of times people feel isolated because it's command and central that makes the decisions and then cascades the communication down. And that can make people feel isolated. So do, is our decision making process democratic that we all contribute before we make the final decision? Again, every team's going to be different, but it's important to establish that up front. Um, also, with isolation, lack of attendance, you can use things, that's where you can use things like social media to help people feel involved. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to move on from this right now because I'm <coughs> very aware of time and how we're doing. And so just take you through. So just thinking about remembering these technologies, right, <laughs> and that <coughs> these, how many of you remember using a typewriter? <laughs> yeah, I can remember taking teching class in yeah. eighth grade in my first job. Uh, my first job, they said, how many words do you type per, per minute? And I told the guy, and he started laughing. <laughs> and I'm so glad we don't have typewriters anymore. But the, I raise this um, only because these were all, at their time, they were the hottest, latest technologies. And they are now, when we look at all of them, all of them are pretty much obsolete. Yeah, we cut, so, Sony Walkman has become the iPhone, or the iPod, mm. what's it called? Not I, I, iPod. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and the thing is, is that the technology is changing so rapidly that the technology you're using today for virtual teams a year from now will probably be completely different or at least will have evolved, become so much more sophisticated. So it's important that you stay on top of technology if you're running a virtual team and you're always looking for, and this is where your gen wires can help, you're always looking for what's the, the next best thing that can help us, that can empower a virtual team. Okay, so. Um, so you've already hit on a lot of these isolation, lost intimacy, um, unclear communication, miss out on informal and ad hoc conversations. You know, those conversations that you have around the water cooler in the kitchen can be very important. Um, it can be harder to build networks. The communication in a virtual team tends to be more formal because you haven't had those opportunities to create those bonds and have more informal conversation. Forget to include people in decisions out of sight, out of mind can happen in a virtual team. More explaining is necessary due to less implicit knowledge. Direction and plans are harder to create and implement. And confusion. So again, these don't always happen with virtual teams, but it's important to be aware of the fact that these can happen, have been known to happen, and that when you form the team, you use this list, this list, whatever you have the team talk about, what could go wrong and what's our plan? What is our plan to first of all keep it from happening and secondly deal with it when it happens? Thoughts and questions about this before I move on? <coughs> no? Okay. So, um, <coughs> one of the things that can happen, because all those things can go wrong with virtual teams, Leadership style can move from um, coordination to control. So leaders can become actually more controlling when they're running virtual teams because there are so many variables that could go wrong. And so leaders will sometimes tend to micromanage, checking in constantly. How are you doing on this? Just want to make sure. Can you give me a status update when you agree that the status update wouldn't be for two weeks? Checking in after three days. There, there is a, a sense of wanting to control that. But if you can think about, as you're leading a virtual team, that your job as a leader is more about coordination. And there's a huge amount of trust involved in virtual teams, which we're going to get into in more detail in just a moment. 
But um, so what, what does that mean? Well, coordination is a perspective of discovery as opposed to a perspective of supervision. And that's the micromanaging bit. Um, promoting learning and sharing rather than enforcement. Now, uh, we don't have a huge amount of time to go into this today, but there are, as I said earlier, different kinds of virtual teams. So there are project-focused virtual teams where people come together just to work on a project and then they disband. There are expertise kinds of virtual teams where you have um, a bunch of different experts who maybe they don't work together on a regular basis, but they are a pool of expertise for a company to draw on. So a lot of times you'll see that with outside consultants, vendors, they are that expertise virtual team. Um, there are parallel virtual teams. So they are people who uh, tend to work more on a regular basis with each other. They are what more what we would consider a traditional team. And they often serve a function rather than project-based they serve a function within the organization. So for example, finance it might be, or um, technology. Um, and it's important with those teams to trust the expertise that people bring to the team. And to recognize where you, uh, where someone might need some help. A lot of times with virtual teams, people are afraid to speak up and say, I'm, I'm not quite getting this. I need some mentoring. I need some um, skills advancement. I need some help here. So again, at the beginning when you set up that those team norms, getting that out on the table. One of the mistakes that people make in any team, whether it's virtual or face-to-face, -face, is uh, not making implied expectations explicit. Mm -hmm. Right? So a lot of times